In August last year, an American and South African diving team joined forces under the leadership of diving experts Charles Maxwell and Sheck Exley. Their mission? To survey Busmanshat and to achieve the world's deepest cave dive. This is their story. Almost weightless conditions, divers exploring flooded cave systems are as lonely and committed as astronauts, penetrating a dark frontier in an often hostile environment. Unable to breathe what's around him, the cave diver is also exposed to pressure on the body which is very different to what he is accustomed to. It's an extremely hazardous and often dangerous sport, demanding excellent training the best possible equipment, and above all, nerves of steel. Since the first known cave dive in 1878, there's been a major evolution and advancement in this fascinating sport. It can be equal to conquering the highest mountain or the solo circumnavigation of the world's oceans. Unlike the average sports diver, cave divers are highly skilled and professional, always at the cutting edge of a rapidly evolving high-tech endeavor to conquer one of the last remaining frontiers on this planet. It's the lure and challenge of exploring the black unknown which causes them to continue. What's particularly alluring about underwater caves is uh, it's not like uh, going up into the uh, outer space and uh, sending a probe to Neptune and, and you can see what's up there with your probe. Uh, we can't send probes down into underwater caves. The only way we can even see what's there is by actually going there ourselves. Man has explored the Earth for thousands of years, and his curiosity has led him to most corners. Underwater caves are one of the few untouched areas and offers the potential for discovery. As they have not yet been fully explored, every foot of progress is a step into the unknown, providing an exhilarating experience and a wealth of information. Fitting one's wits and resources against the cave is both physically and mentally demanding, requiring more than luck to survive in a territory never before seen by man. I think it's very hazardous. It's not necessarily dangerous, the distinction being that uh uh, hazards are life-threatening things, but uh, uh, they can be surmounted by careful planning and, and the use of proper equipment and procedures. Uh, Charles's team here uh, are, are all excellent divers, and uh, they're very careful and meticulous in their planning, and that usually pays off and that the dives go very smoothly, and uh, the work that you want to accomplish is, is accomplished very well. Not yet fully explored, Busmanshat, an impressive water-filled sinkhole or dolomite fault system, is the third deepest cave in the world. Measuring some 300 meters across, the outer perimeter slopes steeply to sheer cliffs over 50 meters high, where the stressed and cracked walls provide a home for many dussies, hundreds of birds and other small animals. Far below, at the bottom of the fault, the limpid indigo water measures some 300 square meters in area, with brightly colored hydrilla aquatic growth covering the rocky bottom. Over the eons, much of the fault has collapsed, with huge blocks of rock obscuring the entrance of a relatively unknown cave system. Situated in the arid region of the Northern Cape, 
178 kilometers from Kimberley, Wisman's hut is a feature of the Mount Carmel Safari and Big Game Farm. With a variety of plains game and different species of wildebeest, the game farm attracts hunters from all over the world. After many months of planning, the first ever joint American-South African team of divers would finally be able to explore the mysterious depths of Busman's hut. But first, the heavily laden vehicles with helium and oxygen cylinders, compressors and other diving equipment would have to be unloaded. Besides the unpacking, the first day was spent familiarizing the Americans with the surroundings, as well as acclimatizing the team to the nearly 2,000 meter altitude. Okay, let's just put this out of here for now. With the emphasis on safety and backup, several tons of equipment is required for such an expedition. The great depths at which the team would be working limited the divers to only one dive per day, with only 10 to 30 minutes of working time on each dive. Only a few of the members knew each other, and even fewer had worked together before on a dive expedition of this nature. With a limit of six days to accomplish the objectives of surveying the cave and setting a new dive record, the team would certainly have their work cut out for them. These are actually three different gauges, two different types. These are mechanical, two different ranges here, and then this is a, the latest, the electronic one that's good for, oh, on the order of 300 meters. And then, of course, we have the same thing in watches, the old-style mechanical, the new electronic ones. You wear no less than two of each of these because you have redundancy on everything you can possibly have so that in case one item fails, you still have a backup so you don't get in trouble. In fact, one of the essences of cave diving is redundancy and backups. So that if one thing fails, you're not in trouble. You still got another one to go to. Uh, typically, a minimum of three lights, sometimes four and five, depending on the person in the dive. Again, one fails, two fails, you're still in good shape. You have such a welder of gear that you're swamped in gear and you have to have pretty organized way to stow it so that you know where it is, it's not tangled up in something else, you know what you've got. Because you can get in trouble just getting lost in all the range of gear that you're tangled up in. And that's a problem when you have uh, four or five second stages. And you gotta have them all someplace, you know which one is hooked to what gas mixture. So you hook onto the wrong gas mixture at the wrong time, you might as well not have any at all. South African cave divers have had very little contact with internationally renowned divers and, until recently, very little was known about underwater cave sites in the Southern Africa region, one of them being Busman's Hut. One of the South African members of the joint expedition, Nuno Gomez, is ranked as one of the best cave divers in the world, having dived to a record depth of 123 meters at Busman's Hut in 1988. Rated as one of the deepest dives ever in South Africa and in such conditions, it is probably one of the most difficult dives ever accomplished. Wisman's hut has already been measured to a depth of just over 260 meters, but then no diver has ever been to the bottom to measure just how deep the cave really is. The main purpose of this expedition would be to get the world's leading cave diver, Sheikh Exley, as deep as possible in order to establish the true depth and size of the system. Underwater caves in southern Africa are also unique in that they tend to be vertical rather than horizontal and are very, very deep. This is unique in that it goes horizontally very deep. Um, we're hoping that it's going to be one of the deepest caves in the world. Already it's, we've plumbed it at 265 meters and that was directly um, at the entrance to the cave and you can imagine all these rocks falling down through the entrance could well form a pyramid and the plumb line arrived at the top of that pyramid and we could well have deeper areas elsewhere. A lot of people have been here and um, from not so many from overseas but they, the general consensus opinion is we have a very special cave here. Busman's hut is an unusual phenomenon and is significant from a hydrological and a geological point of view. At a depth of approximately 15 meters, entry to the cave is through a narrow passage, which
it drops to a depth of 80 meters before opening up into an enormous cavern. Dealing with a cave of this immense size and grandeur, it's virtually impossible to learn everything about the cave in one expedition. And with the great depths involved here, it'll take many more years to fully explore. To understand the complexity of the fault system, one needs to first analyze the structure at the surface. What we have here is a situation where you have two faults intersecting in a limestone or dolomite or some sort of a mixture thereof uh, rocks, and that at the intersection, down here at the bottom, where the, the two faults cross, first one comes in up there down that channel, the other one comes across here, they intersect there and then cross and go out behind us that way. And um, along the trace of each fault, there's quite a large band of crushed rock. And so that, that forms a, a zone where the water can move easily through the rock. And so it sort of focuses water flow. And when you have two of them intersecting, of course, there's a big area right at the intersection of crushed rock. And Bushman's Hunt is right at the intersection. The actual entrance to the cavern is relatively small, and so I think not necessarily all of the material has disappeared down to the bottom, and yet it opens up to what may possibly be one of the world's largest cave chambers, if not the largest, down below. And of course, one of the questions is what happened to the material that was once there. The standard interpretation of why caves form is that the water, the water in them dissolves the rock, removes the material, takes it out in solution, and generates space. It's a little hard to imagine that, that that could have happened under the present climatic conditions because it's so dry. And so I would guess that maybe in the past this area was much wetter and a lot of this development happened earlier on. But once you get a deep opening like this, of course, things tend to tumble in and weathering continues and blocks continue to fall down. So in the geologic sense, this is in a state of continuing collapse, even though at any one moment, nothing is falling down. More than 15 cylinders would be required in the decompression phase. And for a safe dive, the quantity of each tank would have to be carefully checked. For every 10 meters that the diver descends, there's an increase of one atmosphere pressure on the body. Therefore, diving to 260 meters would increase the pressure on the body 26 times, and the diver would require 26 times the normal amount of gas mixtures in order to survive. We'll go down the, the fixed line in the cave, uh -huh. and I'll show you where to tie off. You tie your line on, okay. and then I'll show you which way to swim, and then I'll just follow you. Ready? Thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> I'll lead the way until you've tied off, and once you're on your line, then I'll follow you. Exploring the unknown frontiers of underwater cave systems is much like space exploration, where you can't breathe what's around you, and the pressure is very different to what you're normally used to. It requires meticulous planning, high-tech equipment, and a lot of team effort. In cave diving, you cannot do anything without very competent people to assist. After months of planning, this was Sheck's first opportunity to explore the hidden secrets of Busman's Khat. The cave is even better than we thought it would be. Uh, we're familiar with some very large rooms in other caves, uh, but this particular cave uh, uh, obviously is much larger than anything we've seen before. I've dived uh, caves in Australia and, and uh, uh, Europe, uh, North and South America, uh, and I've never seen anything like this at all. I've never heard anything even described like this. Uh, what we thought previously were the largest underwater cave rooms, uh, a cave in the Bahamas known as Dean's Blue Hole, and a cave in Australia known as the Shaft, uh, literally dwarfed by this particular place. As a matter of fact, we could probably put both of them in here together and we'd still have room left over. 
Mixed gas diving is very different to diving on compressed air and enables the diver to go to greater depths. Most divers only dive to about 30 meters on compressed air with a recognized extreme limit of 90 meters. Diving beyond this depth on compressed air has not been undertaken in South Africa before. Top cave diver Sheikh Exley, already with many incredible feats to his name, set a new world record at Busmanshut by diving to a depth of 120 meters on compressed air. But at this depth, you're flirting with unconsciousness all the time. And to surmount this takes a lot of careful preparation, discipline, and special techniques. This level of cave diving can only be undertaken by true professionals. But the activity is still haunted by the ever-present possibility of mishap, equipment failure, or unforeseen events. Safety is therefore the cardinal rule. 